Hey, it's Kyle here, and today I'll be um, highlighting some of my favorite books about World War II. I'll be uh, highlighting both fiction and non-fiction books in this video. I will say, um, I just, initially I was going to try to rank them, <laughs> but I um, actually thought about this for a few days, and I just couldn't <laughs> come up with a ranking. I had a really hard time figuring out where to slot them, so instead of trying to do, you know, top you know, list, you know, here's six, five, four, three, two, one type of thing. That's like, I'm just going to highlight, here are some of my favorite ones in no particular order. Uh, but I will cover first fiction and then nonfiction. Uh, before I get started on one of those books, I will mention if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the support. And with that business out of the way, let's get started with um, my favorite books about World War II. So first up, you have uh, Jack Dawes by Ken Follett. Uh, there's a few of his books I've read that kind of uh, focus on the World War II era. Uh, uh, Ken Follett is one of my favorite authors. He's great at historical fiction, whatever era he sets it in. His uh, character development world building is always amazing. Uh, he has an extreme talent of making you care about characters really quick. He also is great at writing villains, so he, you really, really hate the villains. Um, Jack Dawes definitely falls in this category. His character development is amazing. Um, it's just overall very enjoying. Um, I'm not going to get a whole lot into the plot of these books. Uh, it'll be way too long anyway. But if you enjoy historical fiction and you haven't read Ken Fault before, I would definitely recommend him. And my favorite of his World War II books is Jack Dawes. Next up, I have a couple books by the same author. First up, you have uh, it's the author, I should say, is Harry Turtledove. First book is Days of Infamy. Um, so this is a the first book in a two book book series. And I'm really just highlighting this series by doing the first book. And basically, the concept of this book, Harry Turtledove, is a very um, very talented alternate history author. So this uh, two book series kind of focuses on the idea of what would have happened if Japan, when they attacked Pearl Harbor, it had actually been a full fledged invasion instead of just a bombing of the the base. And the print that is. The invasion is successful, and then the start of World War II is from that starting point. That Japan has occupied uh, Hawaii and the U.S. now, instead of trying to recover from just a bombing of Pearl Harbor, they're now facing the thing. Now Japan controls Hawaii. They're within a launching point of the West Coast. How does the U.S. attempt to try to retake, retake the Hawaiian Islands, or can Japan be successful in attacking the West Coast of the United States? It is a very interesting kind of thought experiment of how World War II, especially the Pacific, could have went differently if Japan had invaded instead of just bombing. Again, one thing I've always enjoyed about Turtle Dove, he does a great job with his characters. He gives you um, characters on all sides, and just because somebody's on the Japanese side, he doesn't necessarily try to paint them as a bad guy. He gives you their viewpoints as well. Um, and he I always liked the fact that he has some kind of individuals that typically aren't highlighted in these types of books. So like just foot soldiers or very low-ranking, um, non-important civilians. But he's also giving you like high-ranking officers and uh, leaders and stuff like that. So you're getting a little bit of the view of what's happening from every level of the playing field, basically from both sides, low-ranking people to the high-ranking people. Uh, really enjoyed this um, two-book series, which is one thing I also liked about it. It's just two-book series. So sometimes you read a series, you're like, well, this can be eight or ten books. It's two books. Really, really good and very interesting to look at like how World War II could have went differently. Next book is a much longer series uh, by Turtle Duff. Uh, the first book is World War in the Balance. And this is um, kind of a combination of alternate history slash sci-fi, which I really love because those are my two favorite genres. And in this series, um, basically Turtle Duff puts forward the concept of what would have happened during World War II if while World War II was going on, Earth had been invaded by aliens. They're clearly trying to conquer the planet. Um, and how would the various fighting um, countries react? Would they've come together? Would they kept on fighting each other and the aliens? Or would it have been like, oh, now the Nazis, the Soviets, the British, the Americans, the Japanese, we all have to bind together and ignore the fact we were just trying to wipe ourselves out and combine to try to save humanity. So it's a very interesting look at this idea. Um, 
I kind of alluded to when I first started with this book. This series is very, very long because it goes through World War II, then it kind of highlights how the world would have been during the Cold War, and then it even goes into the future. Um, so it's a very long series. I can't remember, but it's probably 10 to 12. Um, I forgot to look before I did this video, but if you enjoy sci-fi, if you enjoy alternate history, this could be a very interesting series. I would say like a lot of people that are into sci-fi, if you're typically not into reading historical stuff, this is a good gateway thing because the book has a heavy sci-fi element in it. If you're more into historical fiction or alternate history and you're usually not into sci-fi, the same could be true for you. Turtle Dove is, again, like Ken Paul, one of my favorite authors. He is so talented. I would highly recommend you check this series out. And again, the first book in the series is World War and the Balance. And the last of the fiction books is The Cane Mutiny by um, Herman Walk. This is an old book I picked up at a French library cell. Uh, this book is amazing. I'm not going to hold it up since there's not much to look at in regard to the cover. But basically this uh, focuses on the war in the Pacific, but instead of like getting a wide view of how the war is going, um, taking place and stuff like that, this book focuses on the crew of the, uh, one small ship, the King, which is uh, a minesweeper. And basically uh, you're kind of following along the crew and the captain of the ship is uh, absolute terror. The crew hate him. He keeps like, making the awful decisions, putting their life at risk, making stupid, dumb mistakes. And basically, they're faced for the uh, ideas like, you know, do we follow the chain of command and just be loyal soldiers or sailors, I should say, or do we mutiny and basically try to save our life and um, basically feel and that's the best way we can serve our country in this war is actually doing a mutiny and overthrowing our captain. It is a extremely interesting book. Um, I know a lot of people, especially my age, have never heard of it because it is an old book. It was written, I can't remember if it was in the late 40s or early 50s when it was written. Uh, so it's not exactly a common book that a lot of people see in the bookstores anymore because it is a fairly old book. But I would definitely recommend track down a copy of this book and read it because it is an amazing, amazing read. Absolutely love it. Now on to my um, favorite nonfiction books about World War II. First up, you have Stalingrad by Anthony Beaver. Uh, this is a very fascinating look at the Battle of Stalingrad. For those that are not familiar, basically um, the Germans were trying to capture Stalingrad. Uh, the Soviets had basically decided because the city is named after Joseph Stalin, we cannot let this city fall to the Nazis. The Nazis were just as committed to take the city because, again, they knew it would be a huge propaganda victory if they could conquer the city that is named after Joseph Stalin and basically ended up in being one of the deadliest battles, if not the deadliest battle of World War II. Um, some of the most horrendous fighting conditions the world has ever seen. Um, and this book does an amazing job of breaking down this battle in very, very tiny details. You get an extreme picture of what this battle was like for both sides, for the civilians, um, and it really hammers home of how horrible World War II was, especially on the Eastern Front. Um, but if you're really into World War II history, uh, this is a very fascinating book to read. Um, highly recommend it. Next up is a book I've read fairly recently, uh, The Admirals by uh, Walter uh, Boardman. Um, it basically takes a look at the five-star admirals for the U.S. Navy um, during World War II and the various ways they achieved their positions, their different leadership styles, um, and how they helped uh, the U.S. win World War II. Um, a lot of times when you're studying history, a lot of times the naval stuff just doesn't get quite as much of attention. Um, uh, the, you know, the land battles are the ones that get a lot of the, the glory in regard to like movies and stuff like that. So for a lot of people, they're just not as familiar with the naval history of wars, and that's even true for World War II. So a lot of these admirals I'd heard of before, but for several of them, I didn't really know much beyond their name and that they were extremely important in World War II. So this book really gives you a look at very important individuals in the war that don't quite as get too much attention today as compared to some other people like Eisenhower and Patton and... Um, MacArthur, some of the more powerful uh, generals during the war. So um, if you're interested in learning a little bit about the naval history of World War II from the American side, I would definitely recommend the Admirals. Next up, you kind of have a book on the political side, and that's Franklin and Winston. 
um, by John Meacham, and this book basically explores the relationship between FDR and Churchill and how their relationship was so important in the Allies winning World War II that if you have different leaders during the war for the U.S. and Great Britain, how the war could have went dramatically different. Uh, really enjoyed it. FDR is one of my favorite individuals to read about in American history. Churchill is also a very fascinating figure and kind of reading how the relationship was and how it changed over the course of the war. Um, it was an extremely interesting read. I actually love it. John Meacham is an extremely talented nonfiction book uh, author, I should say. I've read a few of his books and I think honestly this is my favorite of his, Franklin and Winston. And the last book I wanted to highlight is um, another book that I just recently written, written recently read. It's A Bridge Too Far by Cornelius Ryan. Again, I'm not going to hold this up since there's not really a cover to it. Another Friends of the Library book sale. This book is about Operation Market Garden during World War II, which is basically when the British and Americans did a paratrooper drop in the Netherlands and tried to seize several bridges to kind of give them a back door into Germany and hopefully end the war sooner. And the battle doesn't really go the way the Allies had hoped. The thing I really enjoyed about this book, it was written um, at a time period when Pretty much most of the people that participated in the battle were still alive, regarding the foot soldiers and the leading generals, both on the Allied side and the um, German side, also um, civilians in the Netherlands. Um, so you actually get a lot of first-hand accounts of the battle from the people that were actually involved with it. And one thing that's very interesting, this author, he, he was able to correct the historical record in a lot of points, because um, several of the, the official history at that point had been based on battle reports. And a lot of the battle reports, they're kind of written during the fog of war, you know, mistakes were made and they just became accepted as history and he was able to correct stuff but like people, you know, who were actually there saying about the battle report said you were actually in this town. I was like, no, that wasn't true. On that day I was actually 50 miles over in this town fighting in another bridge and this is what happened. Um, so it's very interesting because, you know, most non-fiction books you read now about World War II are actually written with basically everybody involved in the events being dead. Um, so the fact, going back and reading an older nonfiction book where they actually have quotes from Eisenhower um, is amazing. And actual foot soldiers that were in the battle and civilians who were there is a very moving and interesting read. read. So that's definitely why I would recommend A Bridge Too Far by Cornelius Run. So anyway, so those are some of my favorite World War II books of all time. In the comment section below, please let me know what are some of your favorite books about World War II, either fiction or nonfiction. Maybe even let me know some, your, some of your favorite uh, World War II movies. You know, that's always uh, an interesting uh, genre of movies to explore as well. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said at the beginning, please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Um, thank you for watching. Happy reading, and I'll see you the next time.